Assalamualaikum and good day, my students. So for tomorrow's lab, I would like to introduce about amplitude attributes. So um, I hope you can pay attention to this video before you start your hands-on um, interpretation on using your seismic data. So the objective for today is to know how the amplitude behave in seismic response and you will know how to apply the amplitude attributes on the real data set. This will meet our course learning outcome 1, which is for the seismic attributes analysis. Before we go further, let us a little bit of recap. You have to remember in this course, as a seismic interpreter or a geoscientist, you have to be competent with the geology, geophysics, as well as computer graphics or computer information system. Because you need all these three background fundamentals, knowledge, so that you will be a good geoscientist and be able to interpret it uh, correctly. What is amplitude actually? So amplitude is actually the basic attribute that seismic data has. It mostly displays of what does the seismic data look like based on the amplitude, which is the colors. So different computation can be performed on amplitudes and the results can be plotted based on several um, results such as integrated absolute amplitude, positive, negative amplitude, mean amplitude, RMS amplitude and so on. There are so many more attributes based on amplitude. It is actually, amplitude is actually proportional to the velocity and density relation contrast and it depends on how the lithologies uh, is and what is the pore types. So as a um, um, simple word, amplitude reflects the changes in acoustic impedance. 5% of hydrocarbon saturation in a reservoir can actually trigger a considerable amount of amplitude and velocity anomalies. This means you can see the direct hydrocarbon indicator as what you have learned in the previous syllabus. An example of amplitude shows here when a geophone or a receiver records the velocity function. So this travels, the wave travels in this wiggle sh shape. When we transform this wiggle into a, this is in a vertical view, vertical domain. So when we transfer it into a time domain, we can see that the amplitude is the peak, the highest peak of this one. So in this graph it shows that this uh, particular location or particular time has the highest amplitude while this part has the lowest amplitude this is what i mean that most attributes in amplitude basically are duplicates this is actually data set from um, petronas so it's confidential but um with the purpose of this uh, teaching, I would like to share with you that this showing the reflection strength, RMS amplitude, amplitude variance, energy, magnitude, um, peak amplitude, maximum absolute amplitudes. But basically, they are showing the same thing. Just that the representation of the colors might be slightly focusing on certain area like this amplitude variance is showing mainly the the maybe the boundary of something and it's more or less the same with energy so this thing if it's too much but you don't know it's still meaningless uh, in between amplitude we have the 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 main things that you need to understand is we have true amplitude as well as um or also known as a preserved amplitude However, true amplitude is actually might not look very attractive at the first glance. This is what we have during the processing. Relative refraction strength differences are still preserved and the changes tell something about the gross lithology variation. So this is what a preserved amplitude looks like. It's quite dim. However, sometimes we apply some gain function in our uh, software so that we boost up the energy we boost up the amplitude so that we can see the reflectors more clearly but this is what we usually did as a seismic interpreter so that this will help us to interpret the reflectors interpret the horizons clearly comparing to this preserved amplitude 
This preserve amplitude is actually what we have directly from our acquisition without any helps of the gain function. But how preserve is a true amplitude? So let's think of a situation when we process of um, how do you get your seismic data, the one that we receive for interpretation. What have actually been done to the data since the day it was acquired from the ship or from the river size? Is there any filter being applied to the data? How did these processes change a real true amplitude of our seismic data? A preserved amplitude or a true amplitude does not mean that we preserve the amplitude distortion. Actually, anybody can give example of um, amplitude distortion. It should be something like um, the anomalies that are created by the amplitude. As examples in these two diagrams. This is a true amplitude. This is after a processing being done. If you can see, this is based on a time slice, which is a plain view. If you can see that in this, um, the top image shows that your time slices, your time slice has this, um, you can see some lines inside it. So the lines are crossing each other. Whilst in this, um, the figure below, the below figure, it shows that it is more clear. The, the colors are more easy to be recognized comparing to this, the top diagram. The top diagram is actually preserving the acquisition footprint. It shows the line where the, um, the acquisition was done. So it was from maybe from right to left and then it goes something like that. But we once we remove the acquisition footprint, it looks better and it is um, easier for us to interpret on this time slice. So a preserved amplitude, sometimes we apply something. We apply some automatic gain control or AGC. We do some zone system division. We realize the data set. We do some spherical divergent correction. So this is helpful to improve the amplitude to help in interpretation. So amplitude is actually based on this um, histogram showing a zone system. This zone system is actually uh, divided into three zones. Uh, one, one zone 1, 2 and 3 in the positive side and zone 1, 2 and 3 in the negative side. So this is actually applying for one wavelet. So let's say this is your wavelet. We have a positive peak and a negative peak. So within this positive peak, also in the negative peak, we can divide our amplitudes into different color zones. Or these colors represent by, as examples, in zone 1 is red, zone 2 is yellow, zone 3 is um, gray. So this color is representing the values of the amplitude. So zone 1 have higher amplitude comparing to zone 3 and zone 2. And this is actually re also represented by the voxels. Remember in the last lecture where this, the traces in these uh, samples, in these wiggles, will be stored in one of the voxels. So if you would like to modify your interpretation, you need to play around with this histogram of zone system. As example, varying the opacity from 0 to 1, 0 means transparent, 1 means opaque, you couldn't see anything, it's just black color. For different voxels, value enables the user to make some voxels visible and others transparent to emphasize as some, something specific in your data. So uh, this is this histogram, we call it as a zone system with three zones as I mentioned just now. Um, number of data points is in this y-axis. While in the x-axis is the numbers of amplitude. For zone three, in the middle part, very large. It, it is it contains it is very large. It con some opacity adjustment within zone three. A little bit of changes in zone three will give a small will give a large impact to the visualization. So if we change a little bit here, um, we can see some impact. In the, we can see big impact in the data because the number of um, samples 
in zone 3 is high this is where it has the highest peak highest number of samples while in zone 1 we have only few samples because it's very um, towards the end it's just comparing this part so large adjustment in zone 1 will give a little impact on the visualization so we are going to do this uh, later in the lab so this is what I explained just now. So the number of traces in this peak, in these wiggles, will be stored in each of the voxels. So we can see that few samples will go to the voxel 1 and then follow up to voxel 2 and so on. So this, <coughs> this uh, zone system represented by colors. So you can see the highest peak goes to the first voxels which is showing the highest amplitude. So the value of colors and amplitude, usually we use black background to can see a good, uh, a better contrast, especially during the enhancements of subtle zone 3, where it has, it has many low amplitudes. As examples, this is showing A and B, C and D. A is where we do cutting of this uh, histogram, where we just preserve amplitudes mainly in zone 1, uh, zone 2 and a little bit of zone 3. The rest we discard it. So what we see is zone 1 positive, zone 2, none of the zone 2 is available here, is seen here and then the rest is zone 3. So zone 1 is showing very bright red. Thus this is a maybe something um, direct hydrocarbon indicator perhaps. If we did a little bit of alteration from this sharp um, turning we slightly alter it to have more data set in the zone 2 and then we introduce this uh, particular um, data. So we have zone 1, zone 2 here and a little bit of zone 2 here and zone 1 again. So these this, um, structures, perhaps a ridge or something was not seen before we did this. Um, changes. So by playing around with this histogram we can see some geological features and we can also hide something else that we don't want. So this is examples from uh, KIT 1999 papers and you can search it in the internet it's available. This is another example of using colors. You can see if we just focusing on zone 1 and zone 2 what we have is very bright amplitude, very dark uh, very bright red amplitudes and then we include a little bit of we reduce a little bit of um, uh, sorry we, we include some of the data in zone 2 and zone 3 so we include some yeah, yellowish color and whitish color so we have this one this is a top view of an anticline and then we also include a little bit of uh, we reduce something we change the histogram uh, composition and then what we get is uh, we get uh, some grayish color yellow color and reddish color so if we are proposing a, a volume for a reservoir to be drilled we can actually give a prob probability study for so we can give from a here which gives a large reservoir comparing to this one which is only the reddish color is the potential reservoir so we can have a smallest number a possible smallest number in C with the largest possible number of the reservoir in A so this is the importance of playing with colors and seismic attributes especially amplitudes in proposing your uh, exploration and production letter so I will continue this with uh, amplitude attribute application in the next lecture. Please uh, stay tuned.